What is Spider-Gwen's darkest day? This is What If Dark Spider-Gwen. What If is a series of otherworldly possibilities, and today we're going to be bringing you one of their newest runs. This is Comic Storian. We take comic books, create audio drama so that you know what to add to your collection. Now let's get into What If Dark Spider-Gwen. We all know the tragic story of what happened to Gwen Stacy that night at the Brooklyn Bridge. At the time, Norman Osborne was facing his own troubles with his company. And in a breaking point moment, he began to remember things. He remembered who Spider-Man was. He vowed to end Peter Parker. So Norman put on the Green Goblin costume and he finally wanted to end the feuding war between the two rivals. He devised a plan to lure Peter out by kidnapping his darling sweetheart. Gwen Stacy. Of course, there was a grueling fight between the two of them. But when Peter thought it was over, he hurried to the top of the bridge to rescue Gwen. However, Norman Osborn, he had other plans. Just as Peter was about to take Gwen out, Norman knocked Gwen off the ledge. It's there that Peter made a failed attempt at saving her. But what if? What if? if it wasn't Gwen who snapped her neck? What if it was Peter Parker who hit his head in the rescue attempt and was the one who died? What would happen to the world of Marvel if there was no Spider-Man? Moments after that fateful moment, Gwen gasped for air as she pulled her head above the water to breathe, trying to understand what was happening. She looks over to see Spider-Man floating in the water, but when she swims over to check on him, she notices that he isn't breathing. She quickly pulls off his mask. She hopes to help, but to her heartbreaking realization, it was Peter Parker under that mask. The police, they arrive shortly after, but just learning that her boyfriend was Spider-Man, Gwen quietly removed the costume before anyone could see it. She told the police that they were kidnapped by that monster, the Green Goblin, and that when he threw her over the edge, it was Peter who leaped in to save her. And while Peter will be remembered as a hero who had rescued Gwen Stacy, the world will never know that he was, in fact, the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. But while the costume itself stays down in the East River, it's Gwen who holds on to Spider-Man's mask. The funeral came and it went. Gwen stayed outside of Peter's apartment wanting to find out more, but Peter's roommate Harry was dealing with his own demons. When Harry Osborne hears what happened, he comes back home to find Gwen Stacy sitting there waiting. He asks if she could at the very least just sit in his room one last time. Of course, Harry agreed. As she went inside, Gwen locked the door, trying to find some sort of answer to the questions that she otherwise never had. There were spare costumes, there were web shooters, and wanted to keep things quiet. Gwen Stacy took all of Spider-Man's stuff home, and she made a decision. She put on one of the suits, she fitted the web shooters, and she stared at herself in one burning question. Now what? She took the stairs to the rooftop and looked around with relative ease, managing to fire a strand of webbing at a nearby building. But as Gwen held on and looked over the city, she realized one small, minute problem with this plan. She didn't have any powers. She didn't have any training. All she had was what Peter left behind. A costume and some gadgets, it wouldn't be enough. Not for what she wanted. She would need some help. With only one friend dedicated to Peter just as she was, Gwen turned to Harry Osborn for help in taking down the Green Goblin. At first he was reluctant, but when Gwen revealed to him Peter's double life, Harry agreed. Help his old friend Peter? Help Spider-Man? How could he not? So the two began to formulate a plan, one where they would lure the Green Goblin out and get revenge. But after careful planning and tinkering, Gwen put the final touches on her trap. And the only thing left to do was something to end things once and for all. She opened her closet, reaching for a box that once belonged to her father, Captain George Stacy. And in that box, she found his old service weapon, a simple pistol. Later that night, the plan was set into motion. 
Knowing that the goblin would most likely revisit the location of his triumph, she set her trap. Just as expected, Green Goblin took the bait, rushing over to a location that Gwen had left for him, indicating that Spider-Man was still alive. As the Green Goblin arrived at the address that Gwen had left behind, he saw someone in a Spider-Man costume run into the construction site. Without a doubt, Green Goblin followed. But this time, it was he who would fall into a devious and well-thought-out plan. Before he could process the small explosions going on around him, the Green Goblin was trapped in a wall of webbing. And that's when Gwen made her move. Goblin taunted her as she stepped out, telling her that she wasn't bad for an imposter. But that's when Gwen pointed her father's gun at the Green Goblin. He asked, Do you really have it in you to succeed where Spider-Man always failed? Her hands trembled, and she thought back to Peter. His brilliance, his silliness, his life and purpose and potential, and so much more than she ever knew. She tossed the gun aside, pulling off the mask, telling the Green Goblin that Peter was a hero, and a hero never took a life. She would never betray that legacy. The Goblin laughed. You should have killed me when you had a... But that's when everything stopped, frozen in time as a gunshot rings out, finding its mark in the goblin's chest. Gwen turns back to see Harry Osborn as the one who fired the shot. But that made things worse when the goblin called out to Harry, calling him son. Harry ran over, unmasking the goblin, only to find out that it was his very own father. Gwen looks at him. She didn't know. She wouldn't have gotten Harry involved, but Harry told her that she did this. She made him shoot his father. Gwen tried to tell him that she had no idea, but Harry swore that he would make her pay. Perhaps in a way, it was her fault. She was the one who asked for his help. She was the reason that he was there. And so she did the only thing that she could think of. She took the gun and ran. When she was clear, she disposed of it in the East River, but no to her. Harry would find Norman's hidden room filled with all of his equipment, and Harry would put on the mask. After a few days, Gwen visited Peter's grave to put the flowers down, crying, telling him that she's glad that she can't see the mess that she has made of all of this. But she's going to find a way to make it right. Maybe Gwen Stacy doesn't have powers. Maybe she's still inexperienced, but she made a promise. After seeing the explosion caused by Harry, she knew that she'd helped create a monster. And she was done hiding both. Maybe she wasn't ready to call herself a hero just yet, but she was finally stepping out of the shadows of her darkest day. These what-ifs are kind of interesting. They give us a different look at how things could have panned out, which is what the point of what-if was. But as far as we know, there's no more to this story, so I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time, dear viewer.